Hi everyone, how are you? It's Casey. I am back to making a regular video and this video is going to be a little bit of an update of what I've got going on as well as a box opening of a repair doll. So since I made a last regular video, as many of you know, I went to BlytheCon in Minneapolis. Um, I was very sick while I was there and I was very sick leading up to going there. Um, I did not know that I was as sick as I was until it really kicked in from traveling. Um, so I've been not making videos super regularly and um, just have had only the energy to kind of get through the moment. So I'm happy to say that I'm a lot better and I'm home and things are back to being organized and I'm getting back to my stockpile of stuff. I accidentally left my tripod, my phone tripod in a restaurant in Minneapolis. So I'm recording on a different tripod that is not as good. Um, so it's kind of one of those days. It's also very fall like here today. It's been misting and kind of cold and dreary so not the best recording situation but here we are um, so this box if you remember was a customer of mine that bought this doll back in 2017 so a long time ago um, and she's sending her to me for some changes she wants to put her on a jointed body. Um, she possibly wants a haircut. She possibly wants eye chips. And then the actual repair are to her strings. Um, so Blythe strings. So she sent some cute things in here. I don't know if these are for me or for the doll, but that's really cute. Maybe there'll be a note. Um, Blythe strings definitely can wear out over time depending on how much you pull them. So it's really important to be gentle uh, with the doll and um, use good strings. So it looks like the back plate is off. I don't remember asking her if she had tried to make the changes herself, but that's probably what happened. Um, so let's see where we're at with her. I'm also going to make her a monster suit to go home in that was requested. So that's going to be fun. there she is it's very funny to see a doll that you made a long time ago she's still very cute this year so it looks like the strings have already been removed probably this customer tried to do these things herself um, and got stuck that's what I'm assuming so I am going to, um, because I'm not positive on what exactly we're changing her to, I'm going to pull out a couple of different bodies and see what I have that will work for her. I couldn't remember if she was really pale or if she had more of a natural skin tone. So I'm going to grab some bodies and I'll grab some strings and we'll see what kind of looks good with her. And then we'll at least... Um, get her strings changed and see what body will work. And then I will come back once I've heard from her mom and we're ready to put her together. All right, so these are the two options that I have for bodies. This body I sell in my shop. It is a flesh colored small body or a natural skin tone. Um, and then this, is a pure Nemo white body that I don't actually sell, but I'm giving her the option if it matches better to choose this one since I have it here and it is in white. They're not too drastically different, but definitely different. 
the quality is about the same. Um, and what you really want to do is see which one matches better. Now, a lot of times they're never going to match perfectly. So it's kind of a matter of what you like best. Um, and to be honest, I think this doll is really kind of in the middle. So it's going to depend more on does she like smaller bodies or larger bodies. Um, and I actually think the natural looks a little bit better. Uh, but it is bigger and I personally prefer the smaller body. I like the more childlike look. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have a larger body because clothes, when you buy clothes for these dolls, they fit very differently depending on the size of the body. So there's some dresses that I have gotten that really need to be on a larger body or they just are too long or vice versa. They're really small and they look funny so really that's the only its preference um, especially if it comes to you know what you want them to wear so we'll see what what she says but I think probably the natural flesh colored looks best so we'll take a photo for her on that as far as strings I think we will definitely go with a blue I don't really like this this blue even though it kind of matches her hair better I kind of like the lighter blue um, and she's gonna be wearing a pink monster suit so I think we'll go with blue and pink strings so let's change her strings or at least put some strings on her and make sure that's working for now and we'll come back and do the rest when we hear from her owner for changing the strings or adding strings it's really easiest to get the hair off of there um, so let's do that and hopefully her screws are still not stripped I don't know how often she's been taken apart and it's also easier to do that bottom string if you take the mechanism out so that means we have to take off the t-bar So this was my 19th doll back in 2017. I've done about 20 more since then. So we'll carefully pull that out. And we don't know if we're doing chips yet, but chips can be replaced um, once the doll's put together. So that's not a big deal. And I've talked about this string a lot. It's what I use now. I don't remember what I used on this doll. It could have been ribbon, could have been anything, honestly. Uh, I really like this string. It probably isn't gonna last super long either because it's so thin. But the key is, again, I've mentioned this before, the good thing about this really thin screen or this string is you can get it through both of them through that hole and that will help protect the string from wearing out if you put them through here it's a lot sharper on that edge as you pull the strings and they just wear out faster so you just want to be really careful so we're gonna tie this top one get our lighter My lighter is starting to lose its power and I'm going to need to get a new one. I hope it will last for this. I think I have some matches if not. I jinxed it. Let me find some matches. I have these wonderful long matches that a friend gave me, but matches always kind of scare me. So I'm not super thrilled to be using them. Okay, so remember with the string right here, you want the knot to be on the side of that little knob. At least in my experience, that's where it should be. 
I've heard others say no it can be on either side or whatever but in my experience that's where it needs to be so that's what we're going to do we're going to burn another match I'm gonna have to go and get a lighter. And we'll go ahead and insert this side and pull the night uh, the knot through. I, I can't talk today, obviously. First time back doing videos, can't speak. I'm hoping my fire alarm or something isn't going to go off. Okay, strings are on. So let's put the mech back in and make sure it works because it will be just our luck that we'll just be adding strings and that will make the mech not work. good um, I think I'm just gonna leave her as she is taken apart right now because I really don't want to put her hair back on or put anything back together uh, if she wants to change the eye chips because it even though we could change them from the from the front I think it would be better to do it from the back just so there's no issues and it's a little bit easier so I'm gonna leave her as is and we'll be back shortly uh, to do the rest of the changes. All right, so I spoke with the customer and we decided on the more flesh toned size small body. So we're gonna go ahead and put her back together. So to keep the neck from being too wobbly, I'm gonna put a little clear rubber band around the neck area. This is a preference thing. You don't have to do this. Um, you also can add more than one rubber band to make it even stiffer, but a lot of times it just helps with the head. Um, the head will still be mobile, but not super floppy. I also have cut the hair a little bit. She did decide she wanted a haircut. So um, I have previous videos on hair cutting and my process, but normally what I do is after the hot water treatment, I just cut off most of the length. Um, this is probably not what it's going to look like in the end. We'll probably cut it a little bit shorter, but I get that length off first just so it's not in our way. Um, so then I finish the hair cutting once the doll is put back together because it's better as far as being able to see how you want it to look. So I do some of the cutting and then put her together and do the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the scalp back on. I usually get the screw kind of started in there so that it's easier to get on. Make sure everything is matching up. It's very, very dark here today. So I'm hoping that we'll get this video done before it gets too dark. I don't know what happened to summer. It went from summer to winter. So we have our new strings that we put on and we are going to attempt to put them through the same hole in the back as I was saying that helps a little bit to prevent them from wearing out but depending on how much you play with your doll and change the strings you might need to change them once in a while. Make sure they're not twisted and then sort of get the back plate in place. And then you'll want to put the body in. There. 
there she is with her new body. I'm not quite sure how short we're going with the hair, so I'm waiting to find out on that. And it sounds like we're not changing any chips, at least at this point. So let's make sure her mech works. That all looks good. So that is about it for now, except for finishing her haircut. So I'm waiting to find out how short we're going with that. And when I do, we will cut her hair. Um, I am also making her a furry monster suit. So I think I will show you a little bit of that when it gets done. Otherwise, she's on her new body. I'm going to find something to put on her so she's not naked. Um, and I do need to put her beads back on. I guess I could do that right now. Oh, good. She has underwear. Let's put those on. The only thing with a smaller size body or with the size small body, I should say. It's a little bit bigger, and I don't think these undies will fit. It's got wider hips and a bigger bum than the Leica body or um, the extra small. So we can just leave them open in the back, or I will look and see if I have anything else that will fit. You might be able to put an extender maybe on the Velcro. Um, that's one problem with these larger bodies. So we have some screws. I'm not going to put her head screws in yet uh, Because I want to make sure we're not changing any eye chips before I do that But here are the beads that were on her originally So I think we will put those Seems like there were probably more I think I'm going to look through my beads and see if we can add some that doesn't seem like enough So let me grab my bead box I have quite a few more beads than when I created this doll. So let's see, I have these purple ones. I was hoping they were blue, but they're not. I wanted to see what I have that's blue and I don't think I have very much except light blue, which isn't what I want. The yellow would be kind of pretty with that hair. Maybe those dark purple would still be pretty. So let's see. I think the yellow, I like the yellow a lot. I used these iridescent little beads a lot. I don't have very many of them left. Um, and not a lot of blue. So normally when I get ready to do beads, I kind of line them up um, how I want them to be and uh, then put them on the strings. I have to admit doing beads is not my um, best. I think probably because I don't have a really big selection of beads and I probably need to invest more in having a good selection so that it makes it easier. But I think that's cute. Adding the yellow would be good. So let's just do that. One of the hard things about beads uh, for Blythe strings is sometimes the hole on the bead is not large enough for the string. And they do make a tool that you can buy to enlarge the holes on beads, but to me it's a lot of work for just wanting a couple of beads on a string. So I don't, I don't do that. I try to just find beads that already have holes that are large enough but it's not always the easiest. 
and sometimes if you have like a really long hole like this one if the string is not stiff it won't go in there so it's just not my favorite beads this little blue pull ring that I gave her actually came from an authentic Blythe doll. This little doll is a fake. And this little pull ring came from a sparkly spark authentic doll. And I had it, I don't usually reuse the pull rings, but because it was blue and this doll's name is Bluette, I thought it would be really cute with her. So the main thing when you're doing the beading that you want to check before tying the knots is where the beads are landing. So you want to hold her up and see you want the beads to be hidden behind her back but also not too long so that they show when you're taking photos of her. Of course that's everything I say it's not a, a set in stone rule um, but in general that's what I would do, is you don't really wanna see the beads at the top or at the bottom. And so I would recommend before you cut off your excess string, so I would tie the knot, and before you cut off your excess string, make sure that they're hidden. So you wanna hold her up and see, because occasionally, I think I have them right, and then I cut the string off and they're not. So those might be a little bit long, but um, I think it'll be okay. You can always untie your knot and make them go up a little bit higher, but it's really hard once you have cut it to do any adjusting. So it can be really aggravating if you cut it off and you wanna change it because then you really have to just change the whole string again. So that butterfly one is like just at the top and the other one is just at the bottom. Um, but with clothes on, you're probably not gonna notice. So we'll leave it at that. I'm gonna tie another knot, this butterfly one, so it doesn't go through when you pull the beads. All right, so that looks good. Her little undies are not staying on very well. I have to see if I have any that fit this bigger, bigger bum. They're pretty good when you hold them up. You can't see the beads, so we're gonna go ahead and cut off this excess string. Now we just need to finish her haircut and make her monster suit. So let's do that. I'm about to finish up this girl finally, but I'm working on her monster suit. And the first go around did not work. This body is a size small, as I was telling you um, before. And the size I made this monster suit for was an extra small or the pure Nemo. I'm also using this super long pink fur and I don't know if it's even gonna look really well because it's so long. Um, I like the way the the hat part is looking and I'm even thinking we might be able to put it in pigtails which would be really cute but I really need to do the body part over. So there's fur flying everywhere and so I need to recut the body, but for now I thought we would finish up her haircut. And I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this because the way that I always do the haircut is holding the doll up. 
So I'm gonna shift my camera up a little bit. Um, I don't know how this tripod, there we go. And hopefully you'll be able to see at least part of cutting it. So it's no longer wet because it's not, I'm recording now on a different day. And so now that it's dry, you can see one side is longer than the other. Uh, the customer said to kind of go with my gut. I personally like uh, about chin length hair, so that's what I'm gonna do. So normally when I'm cutting, the first thing I'm gonna do is try to get it to be about the same length where I want it to be. So I'm gonna cut a little bit on this side. The problem with Blythe hair is it is so thick that it takes a lot of cutting to get it um, how you want it. And then it really needs to be thinned out. And I made this doll prior to really getting into the hair cutting. So I don't even think I did any thinning back then. But this hair really, especially with the fake dolls, needs a lot a lot of thinning out otherwise it's just so thick and hard to cut it also doesn't look really natural when it's super thick this scalp isn't too bad um, but some of them are just really really thick you want to hold your strings with your hand as you're cutting uh, because it's very easy to accidentally cut your strings other reason to use the thinning shears is because it will help if you don't get your line super straight to kind of um, disguise that a little bit. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do some cutting because it's going to be a little while um, and you guys can watch and I'll just kind of speed up the process. So now I'm going to get it a little bit wet and just see what it's looking like because it's still kind of poofy and frizzy. So just like with human hair, you can see once it's um, wet where you have some lengths that are different. So like on this side, you can see right here is longer, so we need to cut that off. But I'm still thinking that it would look better just a little bit shorter. So I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. Now I'm starting to really like it. Um, I think I'm going to thin out the bangs a little bit. They're not super poofy, which is nice.
The main issue with hair cutting is that it just takes a long time because as you comb it, you will continue to get um, hairs kind of coming out. And if you want it to look pretty natural, you have to do a lot of thinning. And I notice a lot of Blythe dolls, the um, creators don't cut the hair at all. And I think it just, if you're wanting her to look a little more natural, you have to do something with the hair because they come so thick. On the fakes, the problem is the hair is so thick that it just doesn't look super natural. On the authentic dolls, a lot of times the problem is that the hair is so um, dry and frizzy that you kind of have to work with conditioning it and making sure, again, it looks pretty natural. It's hard to get it natural. I think that that's pretty good. I'm gonna send a photo and see if there's anything she wants to change. I'm gonna get this monster suit done first though and get all this hair off of her. But I think that that looks pretty good. But as you pull, you'll probably find other spots that need to be cut. So a lot of times I'll cut and come back and look at it again later and see if I missed any spots or if I want to thin it anymore. But I think that's pretty good. I probably wouldn't do much more if I was customizing her at this point. So let's leave her like that. We'll finish the monster suit and we'll let her mom know, see what she thinks. I'm about to finish her monster suit and so I wanted to go ahead and end this video now um, as it's kind of gone on for a while. I think her hair looks really cute that length and it's going to look really cute in the monster suit. This fur, as I said, is so long. I'm not sure if it's too long, but I'm going to do some, maybe some trimming. I'm going to add this little belly piece and I'm going to make horns out of this off-white color. So I think once the horns are on and the toes are on, it's going to look more like a monster. And so we'll see. I might see if I can find a fur with um, shorter length. But it is kind of cute too. So it's going to depend on what she likes and what I can do with, with maybe fixing it up a little. I might also put... Um, a ribbon to tie the the hat part on because I did that on one of my last monster suits and I really liked it so anyway thanks as always for watching I'm hoping to get back to doing regular videos um, so please subscribe to get notifications every time I have a new video and we'll see you all again soon bye